Hello, welcome to the Mike Weatherford Show. I'm Mike Weatherford. And I'm Billy Busey. Welcome, people. How you doing, Billy? Oh, hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. Oh, that's better than hanging on like a hubcap. Well, I don't know. I like both of them. Do you like them? Yeah, I like to hang on sometimes. Oh, well, tell me something. What you been up to, bro? Oh, I just got back from Alabama. Went down there for a hunting show for a little bit and meet and greet and come back with some new products. Yeah, I've seen some of them products, man. That's some bad stuff you got. I mean, you, you're just a man of many hats. Well, speaking of somehow. hats. I like what's it? You like it? It went raw. 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 You know me, I'm raw. Hey. It's belt backwards, that's war. That's right. May I ask you a question? What's that? You got any baby mamas looking for you? I hope not. Well, do you know what, when he stands and puts your hands on the car and, and, and don't move? You know what that means? Oh, yeah. You know. Different you, from being abducted, that's arrest. Yeah, yeah, arrested. Yeah. You'll never guess who's with us tonight. Who's that? Well, somebody you might want to be nice to and make sure that there ain't nobody here with warrants for you because then baby mamas can find you. Uh, Guess who we got tonight? Uh, we got the Henry County Sheriff Josh Fry. Welcome oh. to the show, Josh. Lord. Hey, doing good, doing good. Let me. How are you, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> what are you changing your hat for, Billy? Oh, you know, free advertisement for Mike's so oh, offer. You, you know, I tried to warn you. <laughs> I, did I not? Did you hear what we? You didn't hear what we was talking about, did you? I did not. Okay, that's a good thing. You ain't got no papers in your hands, no, Billy or baby uh, mama. Or, oh Lord, no, not no. tonight. Okay. <laughs> he said not tonight. <laughs> Josh, glad you're here, man. Welcome to the Mike Weatherford Show, man. We are proud, tickled, as they say, to have you on the show, man. Well, I'm glad to be here, and thanks for asking me to be here oh, tonight. Oh, man, we wouldn't do it without you, brother. So, you're, you, you, you're relatively new as the job of sheriff. How long have you been a sheriff now, brother? Since November of uh, 2020. Oh, man, well, you know, that's pushing a year almost. Nearly. Well, we're a few months in now. Yeah. You know, I remember you when you was a, a young lad working for the city of Paris Police Department. Yes, what, sir. What year did you go to work here? Uh, I started the city in nine. Yeah, 99 uh, for the city. And two years prior to that, I started in 97 at the Henry County Sheriff's Office. Oh, actually. you there first? I was there first. Well, I went, that's right, that's right. Well, you went to the city, worked all the way up to lieutenant? Lieutenant. So Patrol man, lieutenant for uh, several years there towards the end of my career. So, there. You, so you had the experience before you ever got to be sheriff? Had a little bit. You did. Your, your family's been in law enforcement. I think your father and your stepfather. That is correct. Tell uh, a little bit about your family history in so, law enforcement. So let me, I'll tell you about, I'll expand on that just a little bit. Actually, my great-grandfather used to be the judge in Henry County uh, many years ago, uh, Ellis Carter. Uh, really? Was uh, the judge here many, many years ago. Uh, I never had the pleasure of meeting him, but then... Uh, after that, yes, my father was in uh, work for the sheriff's department for many years. Uh, my stepfather was sheriff here, uh, Dickie, hey, Dickie Bomer. Let me interject. At one time, he was the youngest sheriff in the state of Tennessee, but they said Buford Puster building, building by, beat him by a couple months age difference. Right? I think that's correct. But yeah. Dickie, I, I remember Dickie, know him well. Yeah, he. Uh, so he was. Uh, and knew your father well, yes. like a lot of your father. And of course, a lot. What a lot of people don't know, my father actually. Uh, uh, worked under Dickey at, sure. at the Sheriff's Department uh, for several years and then uh, my father got beat in a Sheriff's race right. by just a uh, few votes uh, against Whack Cole back I believe that was in 82, 82 mm -hmm. I believe and uh so, but then my father left and went to, well, he would run the ambulance service here for many years, too, and, and then went back into law enforcement in 94. And, was he a chief deputy? Uh, he was a chief deputy uh, under uh, under uh, Dickey. Dickey. Well, see there, what I was trying to do is give everybody your credentials, so we just didn't pick a sheriff that had no experience. We picked a man that's whole mm. history, his ancestors has been in law enforcement. Sure. And those two have uh, given me a lot of advice. I hope you uh, hadn't took uh, all of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say I took all of it because uh, th times have changed since they were in law enforcement. Yeah, you, you, it's called cell phone pictures. Uh, that's correct. That's correct. <laughs> I but, uh, remember back in the day when, uh, which the statute of limitations run out, but when I worked up there, we uh, we used to go rabbit hunting at night. 
I've heard some stories about oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> that was always fun. The sheriff wanted to have a rabbit cook or something, so we'd say, hey, guys, go get me some rabbits. Yeah. But that was back when times were different. That's true. That's Is true. there any rumor about that I want to hear? It may be truth or it may be a rumor. i got to ask this. Are you the best looking sheriff? Well, you know, I, I'm not going to say I am, but I hear some rumors in town that that's uh, floated around. Nah, that's what, did you hear that, Billy? No, I haven't. Well, look at him. Well, brain? I can tell you, Billy, uh. that come out of Mike's muffler. Now, I'm not going to say who said that up there, but uh, that's where it come from. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I didn't hear about that. I just heard uh. it on the streets at the restaurant. Really. Danny and... Uh, uh, Derek thinks he's cute. Or, uh, or I think that Jess uh, or Jim. Uh, it's, it's one of them. One of them. <laughs> one of the bunch up there. I don't know. That. I have to go back, you know. But what what made you run for sheriff? Start with. Well, that's um, that's a goal I'd set for myself many years ago, and that's what I said I wanted to do was uh, be the sheriff here uh, one of these days. And the opportunity came about this uh, back in 2020, and so uh, spoke with my wife and. I'd been speaking about it with her for a long time. She never gave me the uh, go ahead or the green light. She didn't support me at that point. And uh, you got to have but, mama happy. Yeah, that's correct. And and you've got to have your family support. That's correct. And, and that's uh, that was a major part for me. And so this time around, she said, "I think you're ready." And uh, she gave me the green light to go. And and so I put my name out there. Put my best foot forward. And. Here we are today. It wasn't an easy win. I mean, you you run against some some, uh, some hard competition. I, I did. Mean, I you, did. You know, they can't say that you never had nobody run against you, and and it was give to you. You you had run a hard race, brother. But but I will say to to that uh, speaking about that, a, a tough race, a hard race. But uh, my opponent, I, I don't have anything bad to say no, about him. Uh, Damon Lowe run a great race uh, against yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a good clean race. It was. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of questions, even uh, had as recent as this morning. What's Damon doing? What'd you do with Damon? Damon Lowe's still working for me. I know he is. And uh, he, he's one he, of my investigators now and uh, doing a good job. And He seems happy. He's he's happy. and, and uh, Well, that's just the kind of person you are. That 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 tells it that, you know, when your competitor that, or your competition that you was running against works in the department you're trying to get to be sheriff of, you didn't throw him to the curb. You brought him in and made him feel welcome and gave him a job. And, and that's that shows your character, my friend. Sure. And, you know, the man's got a lot of uh, knowledge to oh, bring to the table. Yes. And uh, you don't, you're I'm not just going to – and you're just not going to throw that knowledge away. If not if you're smart. That's right. And that just shows your knowledge there. Uh, do you enjoy it? I enjoy my job. I have fun. I get up. Uh, you know, a lot of people get up in the mornings and they're like, oh, I don't want to go to work. Oh, you watch me get up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably crawl out of the bed. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I fall out of the bed. <laughs> but, no, I absolutely enjoy getting up, going to work every morning. I've got a great team um, that's underneath uh, in administrative roles and, and they make it fun and easy and, and um, it's just great. Tell me something. What is the the day in life of a sheriff tell me what sheriff josh fry does on a typical day when you get up in the morning what tell me a typical day what what what's the job like what what does it do well every day is different uh, yeah but typically there's you certain know, things typically, you do. yeah typically most days uh, usually in the office between seven eight o'clock in the morning uh, so you sleep late no, I'm usually up prior to that. <laughs> That's <but> a joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. You know, uh, I can't say I sleep late. Cause I understand. It's right. uh, about four hours a night of sleep. Uh, I'm with you. Uh, but, no, typically I'm there. Um, I get there. I walk through the building. I greet all my employees. I make it around through uh, the jail. Uh, check on all the guys and girls back there. Um, just check out the facilities as a whole. Um, and then I'm in the office checking uh, voicemails and emails and returning phone calls. And then I'm doing paperwork uh, a lot of the day. Because that place never closes, you see. It's open 24-7. So that, that building in April of this year, we'd been in that building 20 years. And it's never closed. It's never closed. It ain't like mine and Billy said, we get a time off. You know? you know, I can shut my door and I come back the next morning. But, you know, your place has been open while you're gone. That, that, that building, I would say... 
Of course, y'all know it's an older building. That was a former Holly Carburetor sure. Lab building and had a lot of years under its belt there. And then with uh, Paris Tool and Die was there as well, I believe, after that. And then the Sheriff's Department come in. But even in our 20 years with it open like it is, that building might as well be 75 plus years old at oh, this yeah, point. Oh, yeah, the traffic. 24 the, hours a day, seven days a week, and the traffic through there. Yes. I've, I've walked through it. It's, it's a lot different than the old jail. That used to be up there on uh, oh, the I can tell of, you that. Oh, yeah. I worked in that old jail. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> That's a lot better up there. But uh, it, it is a lot. It, there, there's a lot more to being a sheriff than just riding around throwing candy to the kids. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, you're responsible for everything. So you you don't get to go out here and just be the good guy. You have to go to do some stuff that you don't want to do. I mean, it might pertain to a bad, tragic wreck or, 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 or God forbid, a shooting or, or anything. I mean, you're the man in charge. You have to be there for all that i mean that's I, that's the hard part i'm there for the good and the bad that's right and um you know whether it's uh, the best thing that's happened in henry county and you know we've had a lot of good things going on in the past month we've had uh river jam which was a great success and we were it a went big well. part. we were yes most definitely uh and then we had the pbr cody nance bull oh, rides man. that, that were awesome. great uh for the community awesome and uh but then, you know, and those are the good things. And we're there to help plan those and do the safety aspect. And we like doing those things. But then we're also there for the tragedies. That's right. And, uh, so you basically, you run a department that's open 24-7. People think about that. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never closes. It's, it's, Walmart can't say that. That's right. So uh, what is your pay? Uh, my salary is uh, about 98000 a year. For 24-7. 24-7. I'm on call 24-7. Oh, I know you are, because I've seen you out before. Back, yep. You know, uh, I don't race no more, but back when you was a uh, <laughs> senior, you used to see me come through 2 o'clock in the morning. I'd be stopping to get me some coffee. you say, what you doing? i said, say, you been racing? i say, yeah, I'm getting me some coffee headed home. you say, yeah, I'm, I'm just out patrolling. So you still have to do that. I still do. I still get out uh, with my guys at night. Uh, there's a lot of nights. Um, not every weekend, but I usually try to get out um, – weekend a month or something and get out and patrol with my guys at night and stop some cars and and stay out there with them and and support them and uh, earn your keep earn my keep and i try to keep people um and some trucks on the court square from pulling up behind me and blowing the horn at me to get me to run red lights. I don't know who that would be. I don't know who that'd be. Do you know who that'd be, Mike? Uh, was it a red you, truck? I believe it was a red truck. Well, yeah. you was taking too long to pull off. <laughs> Three red lights in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, Billy, you should have been there. It was priceless. The first time, the sheriff eased on up and sort of nodded like, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. The next red light, he was on it. And the horn got blue again. He looks in his mirror and he drives off. And the next red light catches him. You know how it works up town. By that third time, it was like this. Like, Jesus Christ, dude, what do you want? And I took a right. And he he finally figured he out. He recognized who it was. I don't know until I told him. Yeah. <laughs> that was priceless. It was a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, how many employees you got down there? How many, you know, counting plumb down to part time jailers, carpenters? Do you even know? Uh, yeah, I've got a. Uh, so I'm right at uh, seventy employees. Uh, that's full and part time, and then you put on top of that our reserve officer program yeah. that we have and that's another 20 to 25 reserve officers so roughly i'm in charge of almost 100 people jesus christ what what was the biggest surprise that you found when you got that night that you got elected sheriff and you got you know you you got sworn in and you went to work that first day with a badge on that said sheriff what was the biggest surprise you found out there uh, Billy Busey wasn't back there in the back. <laughs> True. <laughs> no, but I think the biggest surprise is um, just the day to day grind. Um, you can say takes. the bullshit if you want well, to. Well, it's the day-to-day grind, though, that it takes to run the place, and as many people as it takes to run it and run it effectively. Yeah, you know, I, I hear this all the time on social media. What this show is all about, 
is I'm going to lead up to some questions to you. Sure. But what it's about is to let the public know what Josh does as a sheriff. You know, he don't just get to ride around like Mayberry and sit on the front porch and talk to 8B and pick a guitar. You know, you're responsible for a lot, brother. I mean, you know, you might not get to, to drive the train. You might not get to toot the horn. You might not even get to put coal in the wood fire, you know, but let that train jump track see who catches hell. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be the one to catch it. That's right. And, and that's why I try to, though, daily um, talk to my officers, talk to my all my employees, and just see where they're at and see if there's any problems. that. And I try to head those problems off before they Is the, get, make our bigger problems or uh, before they ever get to be a problem at all. How's the morale at your, at your department now? Me personally seeing it, yeah. I think we're heading in the right direction. I think we got a good morale going. What I hear from your deputies, the ones that I see out, you know, I say, how's the new sheriff? You know, that's just, that's just how it is. And they say, I got no complaints right now. Right. And, you know, I'm not one, Mike, to uh, toot my own horn or anything, but um, – but I like the way our department's going right That's now. Good. And I've seen some changes in some officers since I've been there that they're, uh, it seems like their their uh, attitudes are a little better. They're, they're excited to come to work. Uh, yeah. And one thing is... I let them come to work and do their job, and um, that's what I want them to do. And you got a good chief in place now, don't you? I got the best chief there ever was. All right. Who is your chief? Scott Wark. Scott Wark. He's been there a long time. Been there a long time. Um, and I would say, I say that he's the best chief ever. He's my chief. Um, well, sure, he's the best. But, ever. but we both learn from a good man coming up through the ranks too, and that yeah. and that was Randy Jean. That's right. You can. Oh, oh man, <laughs> everybody loves Randy. Even though I was on the other side, I don't know how. Uh, but you know how he was. I know how Randy was. I mean, me and his kids went to school together and stuff like that, and uh, you know, Randy treated everybody the same. Me and Josh go back. A while, do like you? I seen him come through the door. Believe it or not, and that's correct. He was he was fair, yeah. and I knew he was going to be a good sheriff because I knew his daddy. I knew how his daddy treated people. See, uh, when you got folks like me out there, you learn who to watch out for mm -hmm. when they come after you because they got a job to do, and we understand that. But then there's at times they do things that shouldn't be done well sure but they are that's he is, is I, Mecha mechanic it was perfect for him to come in and i was yeah. excited about him coming in because i knew what when he got elected what he was going to be and what type of attitude was going to be yeah, there. His character spoke well, for well, you know yeah. and to even expand on that just a little bit what billy's i think uh insinuating is you know i don't care who's behind those bars or who's behind those doors down there they're all good people. They've made mistakes, and we hope they learn from their mistakes. Bad things happen to good people. You got that right. Uh, uh, speaking of that, what is your budget? So uh, my total budget for the jail and the sheriff's department side, because I have two budgets. Well, uh, I wasn't aware of that. I, I have actually – actually, I have – uh, three budgets, but um, I've so got you budgeted to death. I'm budgeted to death, and that was one of my biggest um, hurdles. I would say is uh, I had no budget experience coming into this game. Uh, that's the let me interject. That's the heart. You may be the best sheriff there's ever been in the world, but admitting that you're not a good budget man is good. Yeah. Because you know, I like mechanics. You might be the best mechanic in the world. And there's a lot better mechanics than me, but they might not have the, the management skills. So right. you probably put someone in place to help you there. I did. Uh, so we've got a, a finance director, um, sort of a, a diamond in the rough is what I call her. Uh, sure. Or she a hidden gem, I guess I should say. She was, uh, her name is Danielle McLean, and she was actually a dispatcher at the department. And um, so when I come in, the, the former budget director had uh, left, and uh, so I promoted Danielle into my budget director there, knowing her background. She was actually dispatching, and she's got an accounting degree. She's run uh, Hilton Hotel chains in Vegas. I mean, she's got all kinds of oh, man, financial so background. So it was like, it just so yeah, I was like, wow. So. <laughs> And she's had learning curves, too. We've all had learning curves. She come from the private sector. We're in the government sector. It's all different types of financing. But that was our biggest hurdle. That was my biggest 
fear when I got how there much, with the budget. How much dollars are we spending on your department? Uh, Me and Billy are, you know. About $4 million a year. $4 million. Billy. Can you say that fast? It don't sound I'm much. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my my budget at the sheriff's department um, makes up about a third of the county budget. Third, so I'm sure the the schools is the biggest chunk of that. Schools is the biggest, but uh, they're in a whole different budget. When I say a third of the budget. Uh, we're making up a third of the general budget because okay. your your schools are in a different – they budget their – the county has to approve them, but they have their own job. funds. He was on the school board, so I'm not asking – he's not talking out of – from lack of experience, he was on the school board. At, that's thinking, correct. Yeah, so he knows about both of them. <laughs> that's, yes. that's good. Um, Before he was a sheriff. And, and same way with uh, Richie um, – Chill cut out sure. the highway department. He has his own budget that's separate from the county because road funds come from a different. I don't understand how all that works, but I know the general budget. I make up a third. A third of the budget. Yeah. Is a lot of money. Is there a lot of waste? I did not see a lot of waste coming in. I saw some places um, that I felt like money could be spent better, uh, and we moved some money around from maybe one line item to the next. Maybe more was being spent here, and I thought, well, we're better off spending it here. Uh, and so we've made those changes. We restructured a lot of that department. I bet a lot of y'all's expense, people don't even know about this because I see it's a lot. Do you have any idea how much is medical cost that y'all have for prisoners down there? It's got to be astronomical. I do. We budget typically uh, so – the budget has been up until this year um, $85,000 a year for inmate medical. So, and, and then let me, say, let me say this, Mike, and plus another 30000 on top of that for medical supplies, medicines, pharmaceuticals, that stuff. See, so, people don't even know that, Billy. So, you know, if, if you got a bad heart, going to have a heart attack, just rob a bank. Yeah, well, they, they put that. They, is that basically how it works? If I had to have open heart surgery, y'all got to well, put the bill if I don't have insurance. So a lot of times, <laughs> we, I, I will say we're fortunate in Henry County mm -hmm. uh, to have a, the the partnership with the judicial system that we have, because if we see that coming, a lot of times we'll get these people a medical furlough, right? So and can, that way it takes the burden off the county for paying for their medical costs. Because it could be. Uh, at the sheriff's department, the way I understand you, correct me if I'm wrong, could turn into the poorhouse if we wasn't careful. That, that cor you are 100 percent correct. Yeah, people, and you, you know what and I said. That's sad that we've got to that point. Oh yeah, with medical in this country. You see that come wintertime back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. and you still will today. Yeah. Uh, you know, just uh, stop me at a misdemeanor. I don't want no damn felony. Well, <laughs> and, and and Billy's 100 percent correct. There's people. Yeah. That come when it's cold and they don't have anywhere else to go. Well, They'll do something. It is very I did, sad. I didn't realize, you know, until I checked in for a while, see all what was going on. It was really an yeah. eye opener. Billy, can you get us some better cheers? I can't even move without squeaking. Do you hear me? Is it you or me, Mike? It's me. That's all that uh, mashed hey, taters yeah. and gravy. I think I'm just too heavy. And cornbread. <laughs> I would say fat, but that's not politically correct. You would offend me if you called me fat, Bill. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> but let me go back to that medical just a second. Yeah, I, I, I see. I'm so, thank the public out there. And like I told you, this is what this is all about. Sure. I'm not here making you look no, bad. No, I understand. People need to understand that there's more to that department than you just turning on side range and pulling people over. There, 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 there's behind the scenes. They don't have a damn clue there, about it lot that goes on behind the scenes. That's what we're here and, for. You Let know, you tell and, us. And going back to the medical, we're budgeted so between those two line items for medical and med and then pharmaceutical and supplies, yeah. that's 115000 But typically, we spend anywhere from 150 to 170000 You go over budget on that. We go over budget. So in essence, then what we're doing is t taking money from other line items to help cover our you medical. You're taking from Peter to pay Paul, as we say. Yes, sir. That's sad. But, you know, people does have to have medical. I understand that. But we need to do a better job as a country about our medical problems. I mean, it's just uh, – but you do got a garden down there. We do. We Explain do. to me what that garden. Now, this is the most craziest thing, and I want you to correct me where I'm wrong, friend. 
Y'all grow a big garden, and it, and it does one. It does a couple things. It helps to get the inmates that's, that's, that's got trustees. They work in the garden because you know if you're down there for some kind of minor thing doing your time, don't put him in the bar. You know he's just a guy. Let him out there and work in the garden. That's basically what it does. Can y'all run that garden through that jail and so, feed the inmates? So this year we are. I know you didn't used to. So uh, in years past, they've done a lot of. Uh, giveaways uh so and we're gonna go back to my dad for just a second all right so uh, when dad was back in in law enforcement towards the end of his career he was captain of the jail and uh so he started the garden program here and when he first started uh, the produce uh, they used some of it they gave some of it away they gave the excess away is what they did and uh, then over the years, it's just transitioned into where they didn't use much of it, if any at all, and a lot of it was just given away, which is fine. I mean, we've got people out there that want it and can use it, but let me interject. That's not how I see it. If we got inmates down there uh, raising a garden, and we got inmates that's eating, why not run it through the dang thing? I mean, well, that's what it's for, and, and that's where we're at. And you may have a little left, and you know, don't let the tomatoes rot. Give them away, but right. still run it through. I'm glad you're doing that. So what we've, uh, so I just promoted a, uh, I promoted a new kitchen manager since I've been there. Uh, Rob Camper is the new kitchen manager, I know, Rob. and he runs the garden, and he'll run my deer shed, but. So, we're right now we've got uh, zucchini and yellow squash coming in. Uh, we've got Ooh, tomatoes coming squash. in, and, uh, and rice. So, <laughs> what I did, we got a little grant, and uh, through the hospital through a, a diabetic uh, grant, and I purchased two commercial grade vacuum sealers. So right now, since the garden's been coming in. We've got enough zucchini and yellow squash already put up and vacuum sealed and then deep freeze for the last us four or five months. Wonderful news. So, so you can take money out of the out of that line item for food possibly and put it in them damn patrol cars that I see wore the hell out. Uh, well, I don't think it's going to work that way, Mike, because unfortunately, uh, talking this morning, our food bill where we get our food yeah, from going the roof. is going through the roof like yeah, everything else. Understand. You know, our cases of peanut butter we use just went up $6 a case this week. Well, that's that's just not typical, but I'm that's saying right. typically – you know that we're living in some strange times when you got an economy that's trying to boom, and you've got a, a administration up there in Washington that's trying to stop it. Sure, and it's just it's just damn. Can I right. say damn on here? I don't say why not. It's uh, your show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just excuse me, sheriff. But damn, okay, just don't go political on me. But you know that's just. But I appreciate what you're doing. That's really yeah. good. And you said deer shed. Yes, sir. Okay, so you've got inmates that that process the meat, and y'all. Uh, process it and y'all feed it in the jail no sir we cannot feed uh unfortunately we can't feed the deer meat in the jail i knew that it's, and that's what pisses me off if it's good enough to give to the public it ought to be good enough for the inmates to eat i agree and i wish it was i mean why can't you get the usda to come down or was it old guy it used to be the usd guy around here, a good friend of mine live out there on 54 highway i'm not sure who that was uh Clossing. I don't he know. Was a, well, that's back in the day. He was a USDA guy. Why yeah. can't you get come by there and check it out and, and look at how much right. deer meat? Yeah, and I'm not fussing at you, no, Sheriff. I understand. It's just, it's craziest. If, can you believe that? I can't believe that. We're sitting there with all this deer meat. Josh that, can give me deer meat and I can eat it. Yeah, but it ain't can't take for, it back there in the cage and let them eat it. That's okay? what, that's, I know and I understand that's where the, the government has lost their damn mind. Hey, let's don't poison that Common sense stuff. Well, lack of it? Yeah, that's it. But but I understand, Sheriff. I'm not. I'm not giving you a hard time about it. But that just always has well, hurt me. Well, that no sense. They want to defund the police. And right. Then when it gets bad, who was they calling on? The popo. Yeah. But they don't want. But the deer meat's good enough to give Miss Rosie over yonder. That's good, honey. You want you a deer steak? But I can't give it to the inmate. Yeah. Well, and le and let me say this though on the de on the deer meat. Yes, we wish we could feed it, but at the same time, we are. Uh, Teaching the inmates to get to work down there, a trade and meat cutting and stuff I, I like that. Completely agree. And then at the same time, we are helping the the, the community by giving away because there's some people in this community they got to eat venison. They're on venison only diets. I and, completely and so, agree. Um, 
But I'm just saying. I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I wish we could feed yeah, it. Yeah, I do. I mean, there's we we need to get Bruce back in here <clears throat> and let's oh, ha- I, I and, and hammer yeah. on him. And, I done found out some more. You know, they don't want. Ass. Yeah, they don't want to eat deer meat 24 <laughs> seven down there. But, but if know, we could feed it once a week or twice a week, it would last if, us all year. If you could do a lot with that down there. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you're on top of that, that you agree with me. Yeah, well, I do. It's just, We're in Tennessee and they can't eat deer. Yeah. You know how many down there, I mean. No, no. Look what's on my table a lot of nights. That's right. I, I don't make no sense. But the no, part of it that bothers me is I'm just an old mechanic. We don't know nothing. But the point I'm saying is this right here. How can you give it to Aunt Rosie? But you can't give it to Billy Busey or Mike Weather locked up in the jailhouse. What the hell? That don't make no sense. It's the government. It ain't. It ain't the sheriff. I don't believe unless it's yeah. you. Okay. No, it's not me. Okay. No, uh, it's not me. Definitely not me. This presentation of the Mike Weatherford Show is being brought to you by Paris Power Sports, a bad boy and skag mower dealer and service center that is the area's leading power sports company since 2016. Mow with an attitude and power on. Napa Auto and Truck Parts. With over 95 years of experience, you can trust the Napa know-how. Take Me Back Cafe. Delicious home-cooked family-style meals in a nostalgic, warm, and inviting atmosphere. Take Me Back Cafe. Great for the entire family. And the attorneys at Hawley and McAdams, who with over 90 years of combined experience, pride themselves in competent, thorough representation, utilizing their vast experience in a broad array of practice areas. Voted favorite law firm in the 14th Annual Reader's Choice Award, Hawley and McAdams are proud and honored to serve you. All right, we're going to circle back to something you said a while ago, Josh. Um, you said that um, you picked the budget director and your chief deputy. You didn't pick someone that would just be a yes man and yes woman, did you? No, sir. Uh, and, and again, uh, that's why exactly why I picked Scott and, and Danielle. I didn't want somebody because uh, – there's a lot of times I got some great ideas I feel like, but they'll put the they'll pump the brakes on me a little That's bit, good. you know, and tell me, well, let's hold up on doing that just just yet, you know. Yeah. Not that it's a bad idea, but we need to figure out how we're going to do that. Uh, implement it. So yeah. you ain't, you don't want to come up with no ideas to buy fishing boats and campers and carry the prisoners camping or nothing like that. No, I don't. I don't need any fishing boats, and I don't. I don't need any campers and. and uh, Fly in the football. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I'm not doing that. Uh, I, that's just not my thing. Actually, now we're going to move on to some stuff here that's really, I see a lot of people out there that talks about this, about uh, why in the hell is it the same ones getting arrested over and over and over? Mobile Patrol. You familiar with Mobile Patrol? Oh, yeah. Everybody knows Mobile Patrol. Oh, they ain't got Julian Gwynn. Uh, I, I think you're right. <laughs> God ain't got the gavel. But, uh oh. What the hell, Josh? Well, and I think a lot of a lot of them you see over and over. And let me let me say this: um, you said a while ago, good people make mistakes. That's right. Well, these are the point where they ain't that ain't happening. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say I don't agree with that. Some uh, need help, and, and I say a lot of them need help. Some people it takes longer than others, and a little more bumps on the head to to learn their lesson. And uh, but the man breaking in my house, you arrest him. You carry him to jail, and he's probably bonded out before y'all get the paperwork done. That's true. And and and, and then and then with that being said, he may be out there committing another crime once he's made bond. That's right. Before he's ever taken to, to court. That's correct. And and that's why you're seeing a lot of the same faces. They're out on a previous bond, and by law they have to have a bond set. I understand that. And well, well, uh, even with like a. What Hansel McAdams did with d- domestic, uh, remember when people would come in, so those, he would hold them till the next court date. The, and you've seen how much that kind of that, curved that them did. acting stupid. But now the law won't allow you on, you know, do on domestics, like you said, with Hansel, he would hold them without, is what we call hold without bonds. And um, everybody's entitled to a bond, everybody's, even Charlie Manson. Yes, everybody's entitled to that bond, and so there is that that hold without is no more. And so, but what they do have on your domestics with all the new law changes is if you're arrested for domestic, you got to set for twelve hours what they call a cooling off period, 
then a judicial commissioner comes in and arranges you uh, in our booking area, sets your bond, and then you're allowed to make bond. Speaking of bonds, is there a menu? No. Didn't there used to be? No, there used to be. That uh, wasn't legal. No, back when, uh, whether it was legal then or not, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> uh, that was Explain back. Explain to us what a menu was. So back in the day, uh, back when I was there in the, working in the jail in the uh, late 90s, and then even when I was at the city for a little while, um, what they had, they had what they called a, uh, not a menu, but a bond schedule. And what that was, if you were driving on suspended first offense, your bond was this. If it was second second offense it was this if it was third offense it was this same way with duis if it was a first offense your bond was this if it was second offense and then after if once it made to the felony level fourth offense or more then we had to call somebody and get a bond set and if you were on probation or or out on a current bond then your bond was automatically doubled back in those days who sets the bonds now uh, so our bonds now are set by can be set by a few different people. Uh, most of our bonds are set by either uh, Mike Wilson, our circuit court clerk, uh, or they're set by one of our two judicial commissioners, which is uh, Buster Myrick and Danny Robbins. And then if we can't get a hold of any of them or if it's a major case or whatever, then we call Judge Snyder or the circuit court yeah, judge and I get remember, a bond set. I remember the, 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 the old judge, Hansel McAdam, they used to call him for bonds. Yes. He would say they all hours of night. That's right. And, and, you know, and that's another Where's thing. Where's the amount come from? Because I'm going to tell you, you know, like I told you earlier, when I see somebody arrested and it's on Facebook, let's just use that's where everybody's social media is this day and time in 2021. It's Facebook. Sure. Somebody gets arrested, they put it on there, and you read about it, they've got their bond at 10000 Here you go. Why has he just got a $10,000 bond? When my buddy got caught with marijuana, he got a 20000 Where in the hell does the amounts and the. Explain all that to the people out there. So, uh, what we do, uh, the law enforcement has no control over what a bond set right, at. Good. And uh, so, what what we do is we call uh, one of the people that we're going to get to set our bond, whether it be the judge or, or circuit court clerk and Mike Wilson or one of our judicial commissioners, and we tell them what the charges are, what their background is, how you know if they've got if we know what their criminal history is, we go ahead and tell them. Uh, if you know that the risk of flight, you that, call that's right, and they'll ask us uh, where they're from. You know whether they're from Henry County or a surrounding county or out of state, and uh, what level or of charges they are. Whether it's a uh, what class of misdemeanor it is or what class of felony it is, and they look at all that and set their bonds according to so that. So it's not really a set figure, no, sir. So uh, bondsman, they, once you set a ten thousand dollar bond. Then the bondsman comes into play. That's correct. And that's how that all works. That's okay. right. And 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 they have two options of making bond. Yeah, you can do a, a property you, bond. No, you cannot do property bond. What anymore. happened to that? Those were done away with years ago, and I don't know why. I can't answer that. But so, if you get a ten thousand dollar bond set now, um, you can either pay ten thousand dollars cash. Or you can go through a bonding company, and it's ten percent. So it'd be a thousand dollars plus sure. the bondsman fee, which I think is like thirty-seven dollars right. or something. Sure. Uh, but what if, if Billy gets arrested? Easy. He, yeah, I'm just trying to help you, Billy. No. And it's a oh, yeah. He said. He said if. I said if. <laughs> well, he ain't got no papers. I know. He may wait till the show's over. Then baby mama, maybe no. <laughs> but. Uh, Billy gets arrested, ten thousand dollar bond, and Billy walks up and says, "I got or I got to go home in my safe and get ten grand." He turns that over to who? You? The he turns it over to the correctional officer. Uh, they they drop it in the safe, and then the next morning uh, we take it and put it in the bank. Okay, does it draw interest? Uh, no. So it don't. So, but he gets it all back when. At the end of the court case, uh, probation, probation, whatever, and when it's done, and and so what, and then out of that ten, out of that cash bond you make, your fines, cost, uh, all anything you owe the court system comes out of that, and then you get the difference back. Okay, yeah, so right. About, <laughs> <laughs> I hope he can count. <laughs> I want to make sure the guy that counts Billy's money can count because Billy got a lot of ten thousand dollars. I'm sure. You know, the man is a man of many hats. You know, you seen him change hats. I saw him change hats. Well, we know he's got and two I've, hats, and I've seen him in several other hats over yeah, here. I have too. Did you see that hat he come in with today? Oh, he ain't got a, we're in the world is that all about? You got rat problem? Oh, not my 
like hat. Is it? It's eat the whole top out of your hat. Well, I cut the top out. Of oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> is that Filipino? Yeah, that's one of them Filipino things. Oh. I figured it might that's be for whole That's why you don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you might be toting all that rice around you claim you eat all the time. Oh, come on now. BLM. Yeah. Billy's Life Matter. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we uh, he talking about the bond stuff, so uh, – does people pay much cash bond? Uh, more than you would think. Yeah. Uh, I've sort of been surprised at the number of cash bonds that, that we process. But now I will What's say. What's the largest one you've seen? Uh, probably 5000 uh cash. Uh, so, Billy, you could set a record. I could. Yeah, yeah. 10 yeah. grand. Yeah. Uh, and that's the biggest one I've seen since I've been there. I heard but, rumors of $100,000 back years ago. I, I've never seen that or heard of yeah. it, but it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, uh because you're losing a thousand dollars if you're a ten thousand dollar bond, you're losing a thousand thirty seven dollars. You pay a bondsman, which is the way I would have to go. Oh, and that's the way most people yeah. have to go because they don't have you know five thousand, ten thousand. They don't have that money laying mm-hmm. around, but they don't want to be in jail. I bought it one time, but you could. Uh, all you had to do was just uh, prove that you own the property. And but I heard that, like you said, they quit that because there was liens and stuff involved on property, and and, and that may be why I can remember. Um, Back when I worked in jail, back in, in 97, 98, uh, and that's when Ron Myers was a uh, circuit court clerk, we did a lot of property bonds. Yeah. And, you know, you, you would say uh, whoever it was. Our own up. recognition. That's right. And, you don't do them no more. Uh, there is a few ROR bonds, yeah. uh, but they're far and few between anymore as well. Yeah. Um, so you don't really have anything to do with that. So I couldn't call you and say, hey, man, let Billy out tonight. I need him to work tomorrow. Yeah, no, I can't do that. All right. <laughs> Not no more. No. Times have changed. Times well, have changed. I, I, yes, sir. When Hansel was the sheriff, I had employees. I mean, Hansel's sheriff, excuse me. Let me. When he was the, the judge, I had employees would get arrested. You know, when you're a small business like me, it's, most of it was domestic stuff or sure. never drunk driving because, you know, none of that would happen. That's a different story there because of – and I'd always call Hansel and say, man, is there any way I can get this guy out? I need him to work in the morning. You know, and he would say, well, let me see. So a lot of times he would help me out, you know, sure. get him out and bond him out. And, sure. I'd have to go, and I'd have to bond for him and, and get a bondsman to go down there and get him out. And, and, and uh, you know, but I didn't know if that kind of, you know, I'm not saying it was nothing bad about it. It's just that we needed to work, you know, sure. and, and, and like your work release programs. I mean, we're going to get into that, too. But, um I asked you a question about I've seen a lot of this on on, uh, on social media the First Amendment audits are you familiar with them? I am are you familiar with that? Huh. you've that's, never seen one of those? that's uh, where you need a YouTube <clears throat> yeah that's where, interesting yeah there are that's where somebody that's uh gets a camera and they go out and start taking video or pictures of public property in the public domain and they do it to I suck have seen that. they do it to suck out the police you know this day and time you they know they got tony hutcherson on that yeah they, they got, did yeah, they yeah. they got uh we had so we had a guy come here it's been a few years back now yeah. uh, three or four years ago maybe i don't know but uh he come to the sheriff's office first and um that day he come in, he filmed, he was videoing all the inside of our, the lobby and stuff down there. And uh, at that point in time, uh, we had a young officer. There was a young officer there, and uh, his name was Mason Crosser. And, uh, of course, if anybody knows Mason, he's a chip off the old block of old Eddie Crosser. That's right. And who's been a long time employee of ours. And uh, But Mason's a great kid. And... Uh, but anyway, he was 18, 19, working part-time in the jail, and uh, nobody really knew how to handle this guy. And so they sent Mason out to handle him, the youngest oh, guy, the most. Uh, they could blame, uh, it on, <laughs> you blame it on any experience. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, let me tell you. Yeah. So Mason went out, talked to this guy, asked him what he was doing. Guy told him. Mason pretty much told him, have a good day. I mean, handled it. Perfectly, you like couldn't it. ask for a better, a better response from an officer to handle that First Amendment audit than what Mason Crosser handled. Yeah, it. I mean, it's it's good. It, we are protected under a lot of of amendments, First Amendment, freedom of speech, and you can videotape. You can do a lot of that stuff. And and, and I want to thank in my community, my town, that we do understand that. And, and 
and understand you can't just harass a man because he's in the public. He's got the right, right. to do that. Right. And, and, uh, and let me go back just a second, Mike, talking about Mason. So, you know, I saw that. That's when I was still working at the city and patrol lieutenant. Of course, that same day that guy came to the city hall and was yeah. videoing, and and uh, the officers there didn't fare so well on it. We'll yeah. say that. And uh, but. I watched both audits that guy did that day, and I was impressed with Mason being that young and handling it the way he has. And then I've had the the privilege of uh, being his boss now, and and since I've been boss, uh, and he still conducts himself that way. And uh, he was just promoted to the road. Well, it's good to have a representation of you that way. Somebody to represent you that way. Yes. that's really good. Uh, what about the uh, back to blue? Yes, sir. That's a big thing now. I think that here in Henry County, the sheriff, the police chief, the policeman and all that, you feel like we have your back, don't you? I do. Uh, and, you know, I said this a lot through the campaign. Uh, I'm sure you all heard me say it through the, all that time, but I still say it to this day. Uh, you look at what's going on in the world, and especially your major metropolitan areas where there's a lot of unrest, we are fortunate to live where we live. We are, and right. and uh, but it's it, by choice. That's why. Yes, and, and but I never go anywhere in Henry County that I feel you good. You good there, Mike? Okay. Uh, that I feel uncomfortable going, and, and I don't ever feel like if I get in a situation, somebody there's going to have my back. Yes, sir. A and uh, this community as a whole supports everybody we are we and uh, i don't care what your stance is or what your uh, organization is it, it doesn't matter i mean whether it's uh, the crocheting club or it's the the soccer club or or whatever it is you know everybody supports everything you know we are the volunteer county of the volunteer state and, and there's a reason why that's exactly you know you know when someone's down and gets hurt or anything or it's just amazing. Like there's a there's a deal about a, a doll that's been been hurt and all, and I've already seen the rewards way up there, and they're even helping pay that doll's medical bill. Yep. Henry County and, and people don't realize it. We take care of each other. We do. And you don't have to be a hometown guy if you come into Paris and you have problem, the, the community has supported me and my business forever. They they just we are just like I said we are the volunteer county in the volunteer yeah. state. You know, look, look where are we go when it gets bad. You know, with them storms and everything. I yeah, mean, we go all the way down into Alabama, Mississippi. Yeah. We go yeah. everywhere. You yeah. know, and and I I've got a little. Not that I haven't seen it through my job for for several years, but you you made mention earlier I was on the school board, and when I got on the school board, um, the school in my district was Henry School, and. Uh, so I got asked to be on a uh, part of a nonprofit in Henry area, and uh, it's called Mary's Kids. And it was started uh, several years ago by uh, a lady named Mary who was an orphan growing up. And as she got older, she wanted to help other people. And so they uh so we've started this organization. We help underprivileged kids at Henry School. Well, so we. We raise a lot of money by just sending out a letter and telling them, hey, we help underprivileged kids, and we get quite a bit of money. People are willing to help in this community. They are. That's that's what I love about my community, yep. man. And that's why I, I, I want to do this venue to help people, to, to, to allow you to come on here and be Josh, not be the badge-toting, gun-toting Sheriff, to be John, let them see the side of you that they, yep. they probably don't even know. I mean, right. you've really, you've, you've you've really been good tonight. Another question I want to talk to you about that I hear a lot of people talking about, and I've seen it all for years. What's this about the grill? <laughs> I mean, let me let me let me just ask you. It's it's good. It is. And don't don't let me talk to you say it's bad. But I've never seen a sheriff department. Have employees out grilling as much in my life. What, what, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. What is all that? Right. So, uh, in the past, the sheriff's department's had what they called a grilling team, uh, and they would go out pretty much for anybody and everybody that they wanted that wanted them to grill. Was the county? Was they on payroll? They done? were. And uh, I didn't so, like that part. Yeah. Too. So since I took office, we have um, cut back on that. Well, I would agree. And I think that's good. I mean, it's good to help if, if, if I want to do it off the clock. Right. Well, and, th and this is where, this is my stance and my, my view on that is, 
we're still going and grilling some. Don't get me wrong. And but the ones we're going and helping grill are nonprofits that we um, have a uh, I shouldn't say a connection with, but a working relationship with. And when I say that, like uh, Carl Perkins Center, uh, that's a child abuse uh, center. Sure. And so we work hand in hand with them every day. That circles back to that's, your job. That's right. And everything we do for them helps us. And so we do like their cheeseburger in paradise grilling. Yeah. And we do their pancake uh, day. We help them do that. Uh, I'm doing one with uh, for Relay for Life. You know, that's yeah. all. It's a nonprofit that's helping the community. We're grilling for those things, and uh, we're doing one. Matter of fact, the 23rd of this month, um, the uh, Prevention Coalition, Drug and Alcohol Prevention Coalition for Kids, we're having a movie in the park night. So it's just not for if Mike and Billy want to throw a drunken party at the house, you're not going to send a bunch of deputies out there with no, a grill. absolutely not. But I can tell you this. Say there, Billy, I told you it wouldn't work. <laughs> well, I figured Eddie Foster would be there at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the grill is available if you want to borrow it. The grill is available if you want to borrow it. We have a sign out or you call, uh, speak with me or Danielle McLean, and we've got a schedule. We'll put you down. You can check it out. You can take it, use it, and bring it back. Yeah. You know, um, my, my thing with that, Mike, is I would rather have my guys out here patrolling and protecting than, me too. than grilling. Well, you I, know, I got one thing to say about that. Looks like to me that with them out there doing that, that's kind of like what the military does over in Iraq and Afghanistan. They're getting out into the community and learning and talking to people and getting the community a little bit more comfortable with y'all making y'all's job easier sure so i see yeah, both sides there, there is both sides and to it i agree I mean, with that. as a taxpayer but, you know right kind of wow i'm paying you to grill but at the yeah. same time sure. and eat <laughs> we might not feel that way bill if they was feeding me and you well yeah you're you know, right. it's always about you know i like a need greasy a, hamburger I need, yeah i need a ribeye yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about uh your work release program that's a lot of confusion in that there is i know you've got a just a typical where they get out and go to work and they come back but there's another program i don't think you started but i think you built on it to where uh they go to work y'all carry them to work and they go to work these factories dana i mean i hear that y'all got factories out there begging you for them guys we do so explain how that works john so of course and with you saying they're begging for it they're begging right now because you know the workforce is hard That's to right. find workers. Uh, but right now we currently have, I think, nine or ten going to Euro every day. Explain to me what you have to do to be able to get in that So, program. So all of those, for the most part, are state inmates. They're sentenced out of circuit court. So they have a sentence of a year or longer. And uh, so what they do, and then we look at their charges. There are certain charges. If, if, if it's a sex charge, you're not going out to work. If you've got a history of failure to appears or escapes, you're not going out to work. Uh, but your, your guys that have committed thefts or, or drug charges or, or some minor stuff, I guess you would say, uh, we allow them to go out to work. And uh, they have to apply. They have to be approved uh, through a work release committee. Um, they go work. The company, wherever they go, covers them as far as workers' comp and all that. Uh, so there's no uh, liability as far as to the county uh, on that. And then their pay, uh, like Euro, they're working them seven days a week, 12-hour shifts. Those guys are going out there and making some good money. And uh, so when it, they come back at the end of their paycheck, they pay the county $24 a day. What's that? What's that for? So that pays uh, for their for the privilege to go out. It pays us to to for the administrative process of the, of the program, and four dollars of that is for their GPS uh, ankle bracelet. Got gotcha. you. So they they've got a bracelet on, and if they leave the parameters of that uh, building, it sends us an alarm. And, can, you know and we can up. track them where they're going. That's wonderful. And uh, but they pay their fines off. Yes. Yeah, so so that after that twenty four dollars uh, comes out, the next twenty five percent goes to their fines, cost, restitution, uh, child support, whatever, and then the rest is held in their account. And when they get out, they get the amount that's in their account. Well, let me tell you, there's a guy today at a car lot, tell me that one of your guys just got out. 
and he walked up to the car lot and said, I just got out of jail. He said, he was proud. He just got out of jail. He said, I didn't think the guy had no money. He said, yeah, I've got the money. I was been working while I was in jail, and he bought a car and paid cash. So, so and that's a, <coughs> that goes back to this program. The ones that get to be involved in that program, we're not seeing as many of them come back to jail. And, and the reason that is is because they don't – they go to work. They can make a good life for themselves. Most of the time, they find a purpose. They find a purpose, but the company is hiring them back after they get released from us. Uh, so they've got a job waiting on them. Man, that's a good program. And I, I can't see no bad and, in that. And I don't so, see bad. and then too, as we all know and have heard, somebody gets out and they're flat broke. Then they've got to worry about how they're going to pay their fines, how they're going to pay their costs, how they're going. So that starts that revolving door process because a lot of them can't get a job. So they go back to doing what they got them in there in the first place. That's right. This way they come out with some money in their pocket. They've got some rent money. They've got vehicle money. Most of the time their fines and costs are paid off. Man, that's, that, you know, I can't see no bad in that. I, I, you, Billy? I, I, let me tell you this. So we and had it's a, only available for the state inmate, not, not the county. No, no. So we had a county inmate recently involved in it, but he what he had he had two misdemeanor sentences stacked on top of one another, so it gave him a two year sentence. Right. Uh, and the reason it's like that, Billy, is because the companies don't want to invest all this time in training somebody, well, and they only have ninety a th- days. That's right. Point. You know, so. They sort of set some parameters on it as well. Um, what is your record on? Uh, is it is it been going on long enough to have a record on how many people that go through this program that get out of jail and keep that job? So right now, uh, the ones that have kept the job that we know of, I don't know how many have been through the program because it was started prior to me, of course. But since I've been there, we've probably had ten or fifteen in the program, and. I'll just say it, Euro, that's been in the program and left. Right. And, uh, still working. Most of them are still working. Man, I, that's just you know, good. I mean, that's, uh, I, that's good you're doing. It. You, it, you, see, you could have stopped that, but yeah. you didn't. I'm no, and, you. and actually, we've built on it. So I had McCartney's call me, <laughs> and they were needing some workers. And uh, he said, I don't care if you send me females, males, what you send me. We just need So, people. So here was my dilemma I was facing. When I took over, Women weren't allowed to participate. And uh, I was like, that's not right. That's not fair. So when McCartney's called, we sent them the women that were eligible for the program. So we've got, we did have five or six women going out. I think we're down to two right now, but we got more that's fixing to get ready to go out. Why would it not be for women? What the hell was that about? I, I can't answer that question. Don't huh. be gender profiling. Yeah. No, and, no, uh, no. But we hell got that it. started. The best worker at my shop is a woman. I Jessica, work, I'd agree yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. The best one. I mean, she outworks you for sure. Yeah. That's right, but I don't <laughs> take much. <laughs> we see how you act when she goes to lunch. <laughs> I'm a gentleman. I get a break. Dude. I ain't got nobody barking orders at me. You know, I feel like I'm in the movie theater, theater all day long, listening to all these orders up here. Quit talking so loud. Get your quit. Be still. You know. What about the Metro Crime Unit? What the heck is that? So I was part of that. Um, I thought you was. So actually, uh, that was a idea uh, that Chief Wyrick and I come up with many years ago. And uh, I was working at the time drugs for the city. He was working drugs for the county. We were pretty much working. So together. it ain't yeah. nothing to trying to make our metro form of government. No, no. Okay. That was just a way instead of just having one guy at this department, one guy at that department. Y'all combined. We combined, and it would give us more manpower. To fight out here, the the, the so what do y'all problem. do? Predominantly, the Metro Crime Unit is a drug type task force. What is it? You said drugs. How uh, how bad is the drug problem in Henry County from a sheriff's store point of view? I would say ninety percent of our crimes in Henry County, yeah, are due to drug issues. Okay, are you making a a, a good? Uh, what word am I trying to use? Are you getting a handle on it, or is it just never going to get a handle on it? You know, that war has been being fought for many, many years. Ronald Reagan's wife started and, that. Um, 
you know you I, keeping it to where I don't have to walk outside of one of my grandkids and see a man doing drugs. I, I, know, I think so. I, but why? Why? But I think you also see spikes and valleys in it as you well. You do. But I want to ask you this question: There's nobody out there, Josh, that doesn't know what meth will do to you. That's right. It's been beating everybody's head for for years and years and years. Don't do meth. You see pictures of it. You see what it does to them. Somewhere. There's somebody right now trying meth for the first time. You're right. Why? What do you think's causing these people, young and old, to pick up a crack pipe when they know, you know, I, I smoke cigarettes. I know that. I know the risk involved in it. But it don't do you like a, a crack pipe does. Right. Three or four years of sucking on a crack pipe, you look like hell. On a, like my mom used to look like death eating a cracker. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of it is. Uh, they start experimenting early with some other drugs. So you uh, think that some of them lower drugs, like marijuana, might be a gateway drug? I do, in, okay. in some instances. Uh, and I used to kind of think that myself when they was talking about legalizing it, but I think that there's more benefits to it, especially after I've seen how many kids had seizures and stuff off sure. of it, too. They're everything, but yeah. I haven't seen, in my experiences, any of these meth heads, and I'm sure you, too, that it, it didn't start with weed and go for air. Right. I mean, that's that's But ever better. But, but let me say this, too. It, it and, involves. And, and hitting on what uh, Billy just said, you know, everybody thinks marijuana will be legalized. Okay. But if you look at some of our worst crimes that are committed here uh, over the years that I've seen, some of our shootings and stuff, it's over marijuana. Well, would it be that if it was legal? Can't say. That's right. You know, no, I do believe. Like Billy said, I understand where Billy's coming from. I understand where you're coming from. I do. I, I, I agree on both sides. I don't want to have to make. I'm glad I'm not the person making the call. But all I know is every bit of medicine got a little poison in it. Yep. You know, so if, if the medical marijuana part, there is places for it. I'm yep. sure they are. Yep. But recreational. Yeah, recreational. That's where you got to. Is it bad enough? I don't know. When I was younger. It was a. It was a. When I was a kid running around before Josh, you was out there chasing me. There was a. Uh, I don't think you ever chased me. I didn't calm down. I think, so. you know. I think Daddy was chasing. Me. <laughs> well, the the ex police chief used to in the seventies. <laughs> Marijuana was was very popular. Tie sticks and just stuff like that. And then you had cocaine hit the scene. Mm -hmm. And then you had black tar heroin. And I never tried the black tar heroin. Right. Because that stuff, I seen a friend of mine die from that stuff. Sure. He, put it, he put it in a spoon, put a little water in it, heat it up, shoot in your arm. And he and he's still on that high right now. Well, and, and here's the problem you run into. What is a major drug now? Is it meth or is there cocaine still there? Is heroin still there? Heroin, fentanyl, fent heroin. Fentanyl is yeah. really coming in. What the hell is fentanyl? Is that a damn drug that knock you out when they do surgery? That is. And, and fentanyl. How does it get out? And it's used also for, um, it's a man-made. That's what's and, sad and, about and, it. And it's, it's synthetic and heroin. And it's synthetic heroin. And, and you get. Um, is it? Is it got any medical use? Uh, yeah, for them. like cancer patients and stuff like that, it helps them in the last, you know. Yeah. Um, ease their why, pain. Why does he say I'm dumb at this? You gotta understand. I I, I just you know I, when I done anything, my my favorite uh, mind altering drug was alcohol. Sure, but um, one in the head. See, that's would, why that you wanted to run 200 miles an hour, and I'd sit there at the stop sign <laughs> waiting for it to turn green. That's the difference. You know, when I get drunk on when I get drunk on moonshine, I want a floorboard. And you sitting there waiting on four green lights when you smoke that pot. Yeah. Hey, there's a rabbit over. Her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but I would say, I mean, right now, the heroin is making a big comeback. Your fentanyl is a big thing. Meth's a big thing. Of course, you know. the border. That's right. And and you look at. But we don't make it in Henry County like we did, do we? No. And, and that's what I was going to say. When I started working drugs back in the early 2000s, you know, you had all your meth labs. You had your shake and bake method. Um, all of that. We don't see meth labs. We don't see shake and bake anymore because for two reasons, in my opinion. It was easy to get caught with a meth lab because you had all the odors. Second off. Now they can import it across the border cheaper than they can make it and with with less risk. I had a moonshiner one time tell me this story. It sounded like I know something about moonshine. I really don't. I just right. read a lot about okay. it. No. <laughs> he said, the police just got to be right one time. He said, I had to be right every time. 
That's true. And that's what that's he true. told me. He said he'd been caught three or four times. Yeah. And he said, uh, they only got to be right one time. I got to be right every time. I guess that's what the drug producers yeah. got to say. I, I mean, but I, do, and, and, and I see these people. It's the risk and reward. I see them come by the shop tweaking. Oh, my God. I, back in the day, I, I've had them come by there screaming at me. There was people chasing them. There was uh, helicopters after them. I'm talking about when it first got out there. I didn't know what the hell. He had one put water in his gas tank. Yeah, I had one up there one day. You was up there. One guy coming. No, I, I, I met him at Walmart, and I didn't realize that uh, he had just left your shop that day. Yeah, I, said, I just put a little water in my tank. I just wanted to get home. Just a little water. I said, well, it don't take but a little water. Well, anyway, he left, went to Walmart, and that's where he lived. But, uh, you know, I I, and I'm looking at them. They're somebody's mother. Mm-hmm. They're somebody's daughter. They're somebody's son. They're somebody's father. And, I, and I'm thinking, it all goes back. Where I'm going, my story, to hurry this up, is we've lost the families in this country. We this have. And, and that, but that goes back earlier to the question we talked about earlier is, how do we keep the people from coming back? How do we, you yeah. know, do this, do that? How do we help these people? Because a lot of the people just need help. Yeah. And um, from personal a hand experience, up, not a hand down. That's right. And so we're we're looking at uh, we're trying to implement some programs back in the jail uh, that were stopped during COVID, and uh, but we're trying to get celebrate recovery in. Uh, that's a, um, a recovery program for for alcoholism drugs whatever any hurt habit and hang up that's what celebrate recovery is for uh set free ministries we're fixing to get them back in um tomorrow's hope they have a program that's one of the best things is getting and, and we're trying to get those programs back started but you know it goes back to just take some longer than others i've got a sister-in-law um that she's been in and out of jail since she was 18 years old and um uh, we raised one of her kids. That's our daughter. We call her our daughter. Uh, we raised her from the time she was eight years old, and uh, just she just had my first grandson. And uh, so, Good but stuff, but man. but her mother um, has finally she got out of the penitentiary in October, September, October of last year. She's just turned forty, but she's finally saw which way she needs to go and she's going on the right path so yeah, you know news. it's just and it took it took 40 years it took 40 years and it and it takes somebody hitting rock bottom to see that yeah, they need I, the help and turn their life around a lot of times we i i've done it i've been guilty of it with you know helping people you know there, i've got a history in, in helping people you know i don't want to get there it's not not to toot my horn but uh Sometimes the best thing you can do is let them hit bottom and bounce two or three times. That's right. Because you can enable them a lot easier than yep. you think you can by yep. always being there, always yep. taking up for them. You know, and I'm sure when you go on calls as a sheriff and as a lieutenant in the sheriff's the police department, that when you got parents come out to saying, "My kid didn't do this," my, you know, you're enabling them. No, oh, yeah. You know, and I, and I tell a lot of parents, I say, "What do we do? What do we do? Whoop the shit out of tough them. Tough love. Whoop them. You need tough the, love. You know, enlighten my audience." to this it's not against the law to whoop your kids but no nope. it's against the law to beat them but my daddy and probably your daddy would be <laughs> in the pen if they seen the whippings i got but probably you know, billy too billy oh, you go. Uh, <laughs> i know but, i know yeah. billy's daddy i'm sure he yeah. took a few as well well yeah, yeah. but but look, 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 look but you know it's 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 it builds character it does because you're born evil yeah. And you don't know what good is. Yeah. And so when you have a, a person, a parent, or a guardian that always tells you you're their queen, oh, you're a queen, you're a king, and you always done nothing wrong, well, you're creating something that you're going to be dealing with. Yeah. I've got 10 grandkids, and I'm going to tell a quick story here. I know I'm rambling, <laughs> but I'll tell you what this man did for me. I had a, a grandson. I'm not going to say his name. I got 10 grandkids that got out riding around one night. He, You're he, old. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting old. I'll be 35 next year. But uh, he was uh, out riding around at night when he was supposed oh. to be at home in bed. I remember a story. Yeah, well, he got caught. But he said he was out with his, uh, can I say this? Can I say hoes? You know, he's a 15-year-old kid, 14. He said, I just ride around my hoes, Papa. I said, okay, okay. You a gangster? Oh, yeah, I'm a gangster. I said, okay. Can I tell a story? I go ahead. So I called the sheriff. It's your grandson. Well, yeah, but I got a sheriff over here. I don't know if he wants oh, to. I, I called right. him. And I said, I've got a grandson that's a gangster. 
I said, he weighs about 85 pounds, about five foot tall, but he thinks he is a gangster. I said, is there anything you can do to show him he's not a gangster? He said, yes, sir, I can. So we carried him down there to the sheriff's apartment, and we gave him a tour, and got some prisoners to talk to him. And uh, them prisoners had him scared to death, and I was looking at him, and I, and I said, I thought you said you was a gangster. Well, but, 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 but Papa, I said, just don't, don't, don't punk out. This show is me. right here. Yeah, come on, come on show me how bad you are. You ain't, you a gangster. You told me was. You know, what, you know, you said you like riding around with your hoes, being a gangster at 4 o'clock in the morning. Show me what kind of gangster you are. This guy over here, only six foot nine, weighs about 400 pounds. <laughs> show him. Well, you know, you know what's sad is part of the community – thinks that that's their next step they've got to go through that to no. become a man when my no when, yeah, you're right but you're when, right. My, when my grandson left there he was changed man, wasn't he yes sir this man right here had a scared had, stupid is what had, i call him. had one of the best i mean one of the best jailers i guess that's who he was yeah. that really told him do you want to be like this and and my grandson told me on the way back he had tears in his eyes I said papa i don't i'm not a gangster i said i've been telling you I've been telling you you're not a gangster. You might be on Xbox, and you might be at the skating rink, but there is bad people out there, and I showed they you. Have no idea. That's and, right. And, and I do believe that, thanks to you, Josh, we might have sent one kid. Well, and with that being, I've had several parents since since that one yeah. uh, come and ask me, hey, I'm having this, I'm having that, I've got the – Bring them down here. That's right. We'll take them. I don't care who it is. Yeah. We'll take them back there. I'll pick out some inmates. Yeah. We'll do a scared straight it, with them. It, it, it works because nowadays, you know, everybody's bad behind a keyboard. They can tell you how bad they are. Right. Yeah. You've got more to say in your mouth. Though. Yeah, that's, that's right. Tell them. Yeah. It, it's a little different than when we all grew up. You that's had to do exactly. it face-to-face oh, or, yeah. or talk no on the phone. Yeah, that's right. right. I'm up in you. Or if you face. call me on the phone threatening what my hind end, I hung up the phone. Oh, I'll come, yeah. come to you. Yeah. Come to, so you don't have to call me, dude. Yeah. But, you know, that's, that's, that's right. that was the old Mike. That's right. You remember the McDonald's, Oh, yeah. That's not Mike no more. Folks, I'm not that same guy. But anyway, that worked with him. Would he mess up again? Well, he's a 15-year-old kid, 16-year-old. Sure, he's going to do. But I think in the back of his mind what the sheriff did, because I look at him and say, hey, you been out of sheriff Park Lace? No, I don't want to go back down there. I think we might have just a yeah. little, you know, I see a, just a little light down that tunnel. Yep. But uh, well, plus now I've kept you so late, too. your wife is going to shoot me. No, out. that's going to be all right. Okay, you sure? Yeah. Okay, she I, likes I'll me. I'll tell her where you live. Yeah, I think she likes me. <laughs> I think she does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she might not now. Wait till our car messes well, How do you get, <laughs> I know we start, I got a couple more questions. I'm going to let you go. We started yeah. this conversation but you being the best looking sheriff. Uh-huh. How did you get such a pretty wife? Man, that's pure luck. I really kicked it out of the park there, you know. He's, Is your eyesight good? good? He's a good salesman. <laughs> yeah. But I wonder about her eyes. Uh, you, you really want to know how how want her? She's a pretty woman. She's a smart woman. And she runs her own business. I she mean, does. She, she does. And she keeps you straight. She does. How did uh, you do this? Well, you Billy know. Billy needs to know. I'm asking for Billy. <laughs> so, uh, it's a funny story. <laughs> I did that once. Yeah. I you did know, it twice. Uh, so, I saw her, and uh, I was like, I'm going to date her. And so I asked her out. She said, nope, you're not my type. So I kept on and I kept on. And I was pretty darn persistent at it. And where I knew she was going to be, I'd show up. and uh, That's called stalking. Sort yeah. of. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Billy, you're sort of right. <laughs> so, See, I know a little bit about Yeah, long, yeah. You know. I think so, she got him out on work release. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, eventually she said, yeah, I'll go out. But uh, – you know, I'm going to see other people, too. And I said, okay, not a problem. So we went out on a date. I wanted to carry her out of town. She said, nope, not going out of town with you. I don't know to like you that much yet. And Man, anyway, she was tough. Yeah, she I love was it. tough. I yeah. love it. I love it. Yeah, I tell her it was like turning down the Great Wall of China, you know. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, we go on a date. And then a few weeks later, I, I know she's going out with somebody else. So as soon as the date, her date's over that, and I said, so how'd your date go? And uh, so I was just persistent, and persistence paid off. You didn't pull the guy over on the way home? No, no, no. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> I didn't do all that. <laughs> you didn't blue light them and pull them no, over to ask for no, ID? No, 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 no. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I got me a good one. You did. And, uh, I met her while you were campaigning. Yeah. She's a sweetheart. She's yeah. a nice girl. And your whole family's good people. She, she keeps me very grounded, I'll say uh, that. Well, I have to admit, she's done a good job. So, uh, you know, uh, and, and we've got, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, we come into it. She had a son. I had a son. 
Of course, we, we took in our uh, niece and raised her, and then we've got one of our together. So we've always said we got yours, mine, ours, and somebody else. Gotcha. <laughs> right. Well, that's what it takes to raise. It, yeah. take, it, it, it takes everybody. It that's takes right. everybody to raise them. Yeah. Getting off your love life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we got the best looking sheriff. We had yeah. to find out how yeah. you got the best looking woman. We, yeah. we write a book about this. <laughs> School resource officers. Yeah. I hear a lot about that. Sure. I got a question that Mike and Billy want to know. Sure. I'm sure Billy wants to know this. I, I can't speak for Billy, but why but does do it anyway. yeah, why, <laughs> <laughs> why does the sheriff's department put them in all the schools? Why don't y'all split it with the city? So uh, I can't speak. Same money, but well, uh, it all comes from taxpayers. It, it why, comes, why is it burden on you and not some on the city? So uh, I can't. Is that speak a fair question? All, it is a fair question. Um, so back several years ago when, uh, you know. I know you've inherited a lot Sandy of Sandy Hook and all that happened. And uh, so the big school resource officer push will come to. And uh, so at the time there was some negotiation between the county school system and the sheriff's department and the city school system and the <coughs> Paris Police Department and, and, the, and the Henry County Sheriff's Office. And at that point in time, um, Sheriff Ballou just said, I'll supply all of them. And uh, of course, the school system pays a little bit back towards the sheriff's office to the sheriff's office for that. But at the same time, it's pulling. In my opinion, we got to have them. We do. We, I, I love knowing it. my grandchildren. All yeah. my kids are grown. Yeah. But I want to know that we've got some kind of a defense. Right. We got somebody with a gun. Sure. I'm all about the Second Amendment. Yep. It's not a secret. I used to oh, run yeah. the Second Amendment around here. I was the the chairman right. of all that. That's right. I want somebody with a gun. The only thing that stops bad people with a gun is good people with a gun. Amen. Yeah. But why don't the city have the city schools, the county schools? Because it would free up some deputies that we need. That's right. And so what has happened? Um, I had an idea, and uh, I, me and Chief Watson uh, at the city talked, and uh, my goal, ultimately, my goal is to get five men. Or five officers back on a shift on each patrol shift to the sheriff's office. Are y'all shorthanded on that? We are. I think we are. I, I feel are. like we are. You know, how big is the county? Uh, almost six hundred square miles. And, and, and when I took over, we had three officers per shift. Right now, we have four officers per. How shift. long is it from the furthest northern part of the county to the tip of the southern part of the county? How long does it Ooh. take you with blue lights to get? You don't tell me that. On your shift, you only got four patrolmen. I got, I got four officers. To do all of Henry County. To do all of Henry County. Here's the question. How far is it from uh, the, the Kentucky state line? Is north all the way down to the south? Mile-wise, I can't tell you. How long does it take a blue light to get there? If if you're running hard and... 20, 30 minutes. 20, 30 minutes tops. Mm -hmm. So you're on your own for 30 minutes if all the cops are out there at Billy's yep. house yep. and they got to come down south. Here, here's the good part about that, though, so Mike. Billy don't call them all at one time. I will say the good part about that is if we do need backup in the county, yeah, we got the city, we got the city yeah, and right. that, that relationship's great. And uh, so we can call on them. They'll, they'll help us out. Uh, we got a good city police department. I want to make clear that I'm not even talking bad about it. I'm just saying about the schools. There's nothing to do with the police yeah. department. I'm just wondering why the city seems like they pretty well got a pretty good career. I think there's some short now. The city is. Yeah. We all are because nobody wants to be a cop right now right. In, in, in the atmosphere we have out there now. Right. I think do you have applications stacked up waiting? No. No. Neither is the city. No. We just it's, it's not a good time to be a placement. It's not a good time to try to recruit placement. Recruit them. I wouldn't want to go back and be a cop. Yeah. So so let me go back, though, to that school sure. resource officer question. So my goal was here, I, I was talking with Chief Watts, and I was like, all right, when I get a school resource officer, retire or leave from a city school, I would like for y'all to pick that up. That way I can get a deputy back on the road. And so this year, uh, Calvin Dumas retired from the high school. And uh, so with that, I asked uh, Chief Watson, I said, all right, can y'all pick up a school resource officer? And he said, let me check and see. Talk city commission. We talked county commission. Long story short, I moved uh, Sergeant Vaughn, who was at Emmons School, to the high school, and the city is now picking up and sending a school resource officer to Emmon. That's good. So when I replaced or hired uh, Calvin's replacement, Lieutenant Dumas's replacement, I was able to put another officer back on the road. Uh, so, so now what we're going to have, once I get this officer uh, settled, 
we're going to have um, four still on each shift, but we're going to power shift, what we call power shift that one officer on one rotation. So that'll give us five guys for about a 12-hour span of the day on that rotation. And then on the other rotation, we'll use our two part-timers, three part-timers we have, and it'll give me five guys for 12 hours a day. Is, is there any certain times that that, that – Crime seems more rapid. Is no, it? you just never know when anything's going to happen, yeah. and, and it's hard. Full moon. Yeah. yeah, full moon is bad. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I won most of my money racing. I'm not talking on full about your moons. butt crack either. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. you know, Mike. well, I mean, when they had me rested that night, you was there. <laughs> was my crack shining? <laughs> I heard somebody holler, uh, "Say no to crack." <laughs> but you know, it's uh, it's. It's hard to say if it's one time or not because you just never know. You know, yeah, it can all be peaceful. Your deputy's just riding and then around. And the next second, it's that's right. It's chaos. I've you heard know? that happen. And, it's been uh, cold weather. They ain't out. No, no, and you know, but summertime it picks up, especially in our lake area. You know, we get an influx. How We're, big is that lake grown to since my days out there? Woo wee! You know, and, it, and I hear more complaints about the darn golf carts there. Oh yeah, we get a lot. Yeah, so, and when we've trying to uh bring it back in a little bring bit. that back in a little bit we've started this year uh so the first i two think weeks, it should be grown-ups instead of just so many children it, and it, and by law it's supposed to be a licensed it, driver but it's turned into i yes. don't i mean and that's okay if i looked at lake my grandkids they want to get on my card or my side by side and i'm sure they do the same thing they do but we need to it's can be dangerous because they don't because they used to ride in the fields. They don't look at stop signs, and and I'm glad that's your job, the police. Yep. I'm yep. glad it ain't something and, and I got. So what we've done, I'll tell you, we issued verbal warnings for a couple of weekends. Yep. We've started issuing uh, written warnings, and we're fixing to start writing cita- regular citations well, it, for it, that it, 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 to it, try to slow that down. I, some. I believe that that what y'all did by allowing them to do that, they're taking advantage of. It. Sure. Yeah. And, and one more thing, back on the school resources. Get back let's, on it, brother. That's what you're that. here for. Listen, that's let, what I told you. You start with that's what i want you to do you brought up a point you like having that officer there for the safety aspect mm-hmm. of it somebody can shoot back to me that's not the main point of that officer that that, that officer is there in my opinion to build bridges mm-hmm. with the children who may not like the police there you go and so that officer serves two functions they're there for safety of course but they're also there bridging communication gaps like it used to be when i was a kid uh you had cops that walked yep they'd walk i grew up in west paris back in the day when it was not nice it was bad when i grew up we fought over there a girl's parents wouldn't let them go out with us if he knew we was from West Paris. That's how it was right. there. And we had officers that walked around over that area. They just parked the car and just start walking sure. up the neighborhood. And they done that. So, because we all thought when we seen the law, it was like, there's the law, you know, it was bad. Yeah. But it, it, it turned into, now that I'm older looking back, they was building that bridge. It, they it, were. It, you're, you're right. I've never really thought of that, but now that you said that, it does. It is good because this day and time, the cops are painted with a bad, bad brush. I mean, you, you think about it back in the day. When I was growing up, we had two officers with the city of Paris that I'll never forget. Uh, one of them was Jerry Pearson. Yes, sir. One of them was Jimmy Rowe. You and both. And uh, in my opinion, too, the greatest that ever worked. That's right. And, uh, you know, but there was never a time as a kid that I walked up to them and they turned their back on me. No. They would sit there and talk to you. And that's what it's about. When I was a kid, we all used to drive fast cars. And and I carried it further. That's a different story. But the cops was always nice. You had a few of them that was a butthole. But there's bad mechanics. Sure. There's bad policemen. I'm not telling you that 100% of the cops, even your deputies, there might be some bad ones down there, but they ain't raised your head because I know what you would do. They'd right. cut it off. Right. But Henry County is blessed because they always treated me with respect. Did I get what I deserve? No, they didn't catch me enough. Right. When the ex police chief comes in here, Elizondo, the statue <laughs> of limitations out. Yeah. I got to admit to him. Oh, yeah. About, a, about the time I run from him, where I hit at, because he never did figure out now. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> Billy, was you in there with me? Mm. <laughs> I ain't known yet long. I know. <laughs> I know of you. Yeah. <laughs> What do y'all do about the drug issues? Tell me how you are fighting the crime with drugs. What are you – tell me some of the tools 
that the people that's listening to this show can know that you're implementing to uh, sure. fight this damn drug problem. So a lot of it is uh, with informants. I mean, I mean, people don't like the word informant, snitch, when whatever I you want to call them. What yeah. we call them. But we couldn't do what we do without the public's help. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and it don't matter if it's drug related, if it's theft related, whatever the case may be. We couldn't do what we do without help from the community. Is that why some of these drug offenders keep getting off and off and off? Could it be because they are snitches? That's possible every once in a while. Yeah. But but most of the time, if they are an informant for us, if they, if they mess up, they're going to get smacked too. That's good. And uh, But I hear that a lot. Oh, yeah. And, you know, but it's the same way. We've got a, somebody that calls me pretty regular about a house out in the county. A lot of traffic, a lot of traffic, a lot of traffic. Prime example. I've Is had. it Amazon deliveries? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I had one recently. Call after call after call after call. A lot of traffic's picking up out here. We hit it with a search warrant. That's right. You know, and it was all off of, we didn't know that house was there and was that that active you just but they call well right. they called and let us know what was going on in their neighborhood that's what and then about, we're man. able to get out there and start watching and what's going on and we may get a traffic stop or two and say all right yeah. this car left we stopped it we got this out of it. this car left stopped it we got this out of it we've tried to build our case so what you're saying is is the public is a, a big help in stopping this most definitely and and and, and, that's, and it makes sense billy you know i know billy you're 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 a pretty good uh uh, neighbor down there, and you're you keep an eye out for stuff. I'm sure you do. I know you. No well, way. here's my theory about it. The police can only investigate a crime, and like Daddy says, it's up to me and you to prevent them. I so uh, I try to do my part and try to help out where I can to a certain extent. But then they've got a job to do, sure. and. But I'm just saying, I try to keep my mouth shut best I can. I didn't say you was narking. I'm yeah, saying you're watching. Me there, because it's going to go out here on the public. No, it? nobody. I wasn't even insinuating that. I was saying that you watch your well, neighborhood, too. He you knows should. ever since uh, Hansel adopted me, that's all they ever said about me. <laughs> no, I wasn't even insinuating that. I was but, talking. But I, but I think what Mike's saying is. Oh, I know. I'm trying to be funny. Yeah. But I mean, you're watching around your neighborhood. You I watch know what's around. going on in your neighborhood. That's you right. know, and if you if something's different, that's right. And if if well, you've got a neighbor and you see a funny car parked there, you're gonna keep an eye on that yeah. until you figure out what's going on. And it, it, well, I've had it in my what shop. What I do is I stop them when they come down there in my neighborhood. Sure, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, Billy does. What I've I've seen it at my shop before, where I've had people call me at home and say, "Hey, Mike, there's somebody up here in a car at your shop." And and I'll have me or whoever one of my employees is close to go up and it's a customer dropping off a car. But I never bitch at them. I appreciate right. that. Yep. Oh, you know, yeah. You know, because cops are usually there after the fact to take your chalk and draw, a, That's draw right. out the line and put up the tape. You know, it's up to us to help you do your job. That's right. But Because uh, most of the time, by the time we get a call, the crime's already happened. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and yeah. we're way behind the eight ball at that point. Uh, what changes do you want to see in the sheriff's department? What is your goal to, to when you leave office? Twenty years from now, five years from now, whenever Josh says I've had enough law enforcement, I'm going to go to work for you, Mike, working on cars. What would you want to say that they can look back and say is something that you've changed for the good for the Shander County Sheriff's Department? Well, I think the main thing I want to change. My first and fo- foremost, my priority is making that one of the most professional departments, if not the most professional department in the state of Tennessee. Uh, and that's from, the, ways would you want that's to, from the bottom to the top. How are you wanting to do that? What, and what, what and the, to I want the way we treat people, the way we talk to people, the way we handle things, um, the way we investigate crimes, whatever so the tools. So if a complaint on your officer, you take serious? Most definitely. Most Good. definitely. So, and, it ain't going, so if... if, if if I called you and I said, man, one of your deputies pulled me over, and man, he was a butt to me. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, are, is he, are you going to ask the officer? Oh, yeah. And, and here's the thing with us, too. Uh, we all have body cams. Right. And that body cam is supposed to be rolling. And uh, so I've got that. You know, I can pull body cam footage. Uh, we review that periodically. And we're fixing to get new body cams. So, uh, But I don't believe that your deputies, the ones that I know, 
none of them would, would, would do that. I think everyone I've ever been around, and I know a lot of them, have always been good people, yes. down-to-earth people. They just like you and I. They want to go home at night. That's correct. They're doing a job, and, and they don't get thanked enough. Yeah, and, and, that, and they're I probably just, not paid enough, John. I agree with that. Yeah. And, and I will – let me say this. Um, you're right. We all just want to go home. Yeah. We want to go back to our families the way we left Well, them. sure we are. And, it, uh, it's not a death warrant to be a – it should never be a death sentence to be a policeman. No. And, and I'm afraid – that we're allowing this country to head that way by trying to defund the police and try to make them into the bad guys. Well, just but, because he's got that badge on, he, he's got a target on him. Yeah, I've it got, shouldn't be that way. I've it, got there was a time. relatives in New York, uh, Colorado, and San Diego, and they all wear the badge. What I'm, and it's what, scary. I think when bit. Josh came in here today, I think they seen the human side of a sheriff. But let me let me say this: you, you brought up the defund the police movement. Yeah. I don't know how much you keep up with the national um, regular, news. and I've not, not, I feel like you do, but if you saw yesterday, I think it was day before, everybody's been pushing for defund the police, yeah, defund the, Biden the police. Administration trying but, to harm more but, but we're now we're getting some grant money. Mm-hmm. They see where that's going, and so we're getting more grant money now. Not everywhere is going to get that grant money. But let me tell you something. But there's going to be grant money available to hire more officers. Let me give you a little fresh, a little breath of fresh air. That movement was a small percent of this country. Sure. I I think you're right. It's so small, it probably don't even register, but they was loud. Yep. And they got what they wanted. They got the attention, and then you're – fake news media run with it and made it an agenda that shouldn't even be an agenda because right. you are the first defense you and what you do protects me right and it protects him but it allows me also to do a normal life i can get up I and disagree care my- with that i think the first line of defense is me and you I'm, you're right but it's also the sheriff's department right. let me you're right Billy. I'm, you're right but it allows me to be able to carry my girlfriend dana out to eat supper it allows me to lay Which down. You and probably should do more often. I do it regular. Okay. We are connoisseurs of food. Okay. Look at this. Look I at him. <laughs> Look at him. I'm gaining weight, man. But uh, I, I just want you to know that 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 as a whole, and I see a lot of people, Josh, through my shop up there. You would be surprised at the people that come through my office up there, and I'd be hard pressed. In a year's time, to find three or four people that doesn't support the police department, right? No, I think you're right. And, and the sheriff's department, but and nationwide, it's such a small percent. Right. But the news media, and that's sort of why I wanted you on here to. to, to we talked about a lot of things. I've kept you longer than I should have kept you. That's all right. But um, I want him to see the human side of the sure. sheriff, and I want him to see that that he is a a walking, talking human being, and it knows his job. And you've done all of that. You you've told us all. You've never backed up on anything I've asked you. And and the questions have not been crazy. Right. They just questions that the average person would like to know. Uh, I mean. Is there anything else that you want to set the record I, I, straight? I do. I want okay. to say one other thing, and I think uh, I know I've heard it. I'm sure other people have heard it. You know, um, I'm not in the media a lot. You brought up the media. I'm not a media person. Yeah, what's going on? You used to. <laughs> I'm going to butt in on you, which I get in trouble for this. But I'm used to seeing the sheriff's picture all the time. Yeah, well, that's just not who I am. Um, you know, are you I, allowing the people that does the the job to get? The, the publicity is that what you're that, trying to that's what I'm trying to get at I am it's not me doing a job mm-hmm. uh, I'm running that department but my men and women are the ones out there doing the job I don't want to steal their glory if that's what you want to call it per se from the work and job they did and performed uh, is there going to be times I'm going to be on the front page or, or you know out there in the front yes there's going to be those times but we're there we want to do the law enforcement aspect of the job I'm not so worried about the PR part of the job but you, I want you to think of one thing Sheriff you're allowing them people to do their job too that's correct you're giving them the tools to do that job with without a good sheriff they might not can do that job right so you 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 need to let us know those people you know that you are out there doing the job just because a, a deputy made this big drug arrest 
I'm sure you had a hand in it. You knew it was going to happen. Most yeah. of the time, I know. You know, you know, yeah. you know what? I mean, yeah, you do know. You yeah. know what's going on, and give yourself more credit. Really. Yeah. But you know, I, I just my opinion is humble I, and i can understand <laughs> that but give yourself a little more credit because yeah. without you they probably wouldn't have the want to get out there right, right. And, yeah. and but again like you said i'm humble you're humble and, and we all appreciate what you I, and do. i'm proud that the community had the 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 trust, trust in me to do this position, well, there was and, no, there was, and you know, I don't want to steal that away from my guys for the job they do. You're not stealing nothing. I'm just proud to have you. I'm hoping you be, be able to rub off on them a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying. Right. That, that's right. That's but right. Mike said it from earlier. Starts at the top. Yeah, it does. It's got to filter down. It does. And, I understand that. You and, lead by and I believe that you, is happening every day. I try to lead my shop. Where do you see me at when you're up? I'm out there in the, off, out there in the shop working. My daughter runs the office. Yep. I'm not back here pointing, boys, just go that way. I'm up here saying, come on, guys, let's get this done. And I think that's what you're doing. Yep. You know, it's like Patton during World War II. He wasn't in the back pointing. They was, he was in the front saying, y'all, come on. They was having no that's right. making dodge bullets. But uh, – Josh, I've been hard on you. No, sir. Was it what you expected? It was. I had a good time. Did you have a good it time? It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> and uh, I, I really appreciate you coming in. Well, no, Me I too. Yeah. And, and I want to come back. I want good. you to come back. So, uh, at some there, point there, 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 There's a lot of things that we, we, we need. I could go on, but we try to cut it down to an hour. Sure. And, uh, the, the, We're probably way past that. We are past that. <laughs> but, you know, we covered a lot of grounds. And, and, and uh, tell, your, tell your people in, in the law enforcement that not to be scared of mine. No. And, like, you know, and, it's, uh, tell them not to be scared of me. I'm not going to come in here and make you look stupid. Right. I, and, and pass this along. No, do they can a, do that on their own. Yeah, all of them can do it on their own. <laughs> we all can at some yeah, point yeah. in our lives. Exactly. <laughs> but what I want you to tell them what we're doing in here is I've allowed you to have a place to come in any time. And get right here with the cameras. Look at your smiling face over. See, that's pretty ugly. It face. is. Well, no, that's not. I know that first statement you made, but yeah. if I look at that um, camera, that's pretty rough. Well, they might see something <laughs> I didn't see. You are going to be to where you can come here anytime. Yeah. And anytime you want to get the record straight, anything you want to say, just call me. You know where I am. Say, hey, Mike, we're going to come on the show. I want to talk to the public about this. Sure. I don't know if this show is going to work. I, I believe hope it, it does. Yeah, I believe it will. I think. I, I hope it does. Yep. Because. You, it's going to give the local people, community, yeah. a chance to see us. Who you are, see who you are, what you do, and I'm going to try my best to always be fair, always ask questions. It's not real tough, but questions that I see on Facebook and, and sure. social media. Yep. But uh, I want to appreciate you, man. I tell Thank you, you. I, how much I appreciate you I taking appreciate time away to come in. and. Uh, what do you think about my protege? He, Man. He, he's a good one, right? He's a good one. Could I he's a good a better one. one. I don't think so. No, you hear him in the background. Just come up with something that's just. I know. Uh, anything you want to embarrass the sheriff with, you embarrassed all my guests. You can't let the sheriff out here free, are you? Be easy, baby. Any crazy mm. questions that you want to ask him? No, I can't. Not, not, it won't hit me right now, but I mean, usually it does. He'll probably but, uh, call me tomorrow. Yeah, he'll call you tonight <laughs> about three in the morning. Josh, I appreciate it, brother. Thank I you. really do appreciate you coming appreciate in. Appreciate I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, keep up the good work, brother. Look forward to being All back. Right. We just had a conversation with the sheriff of Henry County, Sheriff Josh Fry. Billy, what do you think? I thought it went well. I got a lot of information. Did I beat him up? No. No. There's a lot know. of questions that I could ask that uh, we just didn't have the time to do. It, it takes two or three days to get everything yeah. out there, but I wanted the people to see the kind of guy he is, that he's just a human being that's really trying to do the right thing for the community. So uh, we got some other people coming in. I want to thank all y'all for tuning in and listening to this crazy stuff that me and Billy do call the show. Uh, I just appreciate my listeners. And tune in. We got other people coming. Billy, yeah, lead us out of here in a closing I prayer. I got nothing to do except just say, uh, hang on to your drinks and ladies, hold on to your eyelashes. There, here we come. There you go. See y'all. Bye. <laughs> This portion of the Mike Weatherford Show was brought to you in part by 54 Fuel Mart, a great place to eat with friendly staff and some of the best gas prices in town. Stop in for a bite to eat and get treated like family. That's 54 Fuel Mart, 1213A West Wood Street in Paris.